from from right. what you're saying now, it's it looks like the issues in Southern Kaduna are not just security based, but ethnic and religious. Yes, you know the, 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 that is what people insist on. People insist that this is about Islamization. This is about uh, uh, you know uh, hurting Christians. This is about hurting people of Southern Kaduna. So the inability for us to come together as a state, all right, and look at the issues of insecurity globally is part of the problem. You cannot have somebody reading out those kind of sentences about a governor who is walking around the clock mm. to bring about peace and hope that that can be achievable in a short time. And, 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 let, me, and let, let me also say something here. I hate the idea of talking about insecurity in Southern Kaduna. In Southern Kaduna, there are local governments that don't have these problems. And so the failure of leaders to take responsibility of leadership, including elected representatives, who should look at things as they happen, because these issues, if you look, I have traced the, the roots of virtually every of these attacks, and you find that it is far from imagining that it is one big plan somewhere okay. we'll, we'll, we'll come to come to in uh, and attack the people. But you see in just, incidences um, that could have been nipped very easily I'll, at I'll, the beginning. I'll let you explain that. that. We're not. I'll let you explain that in a moment, but just help me understand this. Um, are you saying that the, or what exactly is it that the government is doing? Are they going to pay compensation to those who are carrying this out or they're trying to identify them in order to pay compensation what is the exact thing you see in all the effort that government has been making the idea first and foremost most importantly is to stop the killings and i do not think that if the last speaker means well for the people he will not consider any price too high for human lives to be paid. What the governor is just saying is, you know, is out of his frustration about what is going on. Why do these people come in? And by the way, this governor has had meetings with Fulanis alongside the traditional rulers of the people of Southern Kaduna. Has he paid anyone? No, he hasn't. Because well, I, I'm... Hold on. Hold on. He said here, um, we... In most of the communities, mm -hmm. there's a quote directly from the governor. Mm -hmm. Once that appeal was made to them, they said they are forgiven. There are one or two that asked for monetary compensation. They said they are forgiven the death of human beings, but one compensation for cattle. We said, no problem. We paid some. We, 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 we do We paid what? some. No. And you say no one was paid. No, we, we, this is a quote I, from the governor. Yeah. Th that, that he's paid some. Yes. He's paid some. Well, I'm not aware of that, quite frankly. But like I'm saying, what we should look at more than the issue of money, payment, or whatever, is the governor's commitment towards stopping these killings. And like I said, any patriotic person, I'm not talking about people who sit away from the communities where the epicenters of these killings and say the kind of things, I am a community person. The last time this was about to happen in my local government, it was about a newspaper report. A newspaper report, Daily Trust to be specific, came up with a report that the youths in my community had killed two human beings, two Fulanis. I, I mean, I'm just giving an example, an example of, on how these things normally start. Until and unless leaders and people who mean well do the, the, the needful. When I saw that report, I ran back home immediately. And I, I was not in government. I asked the youth, what happened? When did you start killing human beings? They said they never did. I went, called the Fulanis, called the Ardos, and we had a community meeting with all of them. And they said it never happened. It never happened. You know why I was doing that? Because there could be a reprisal attack from any, from Niger, from anywhere, on account of the community having killed people. But I took that step to forestall that. And what, they did, what we did after that was that the Fulanis, sitting side by side, with the community, the youths from the community, did a counter press conference and said they've always lived in peace. 
They, they, they never fought among themselves. And that dispelled the whole thing. And I believe that that forestalled something that could If you take the cases, each of the cases as they happen, and that is why I prefer okay. that we discuss these cases as yeah. they happen, where they happen, instead of talking about genocide okay. in southern Karuna. Let's raise Godo Godo. Uh, yeah. because we've had several people, because you, you could shed some light about it. Yeah. Uh, they say that when the Fulani herdsmen attack, uh, they not only kill people, they take over the communities, they build houses, and they currently are occupying those places. And they've not been able to go back to their communities. Is that the case? Now, now, now let, let me be very honest with you. Uh, like we said, the, first of all, nobody's happy with all these, that are, these things that are happening. These Fulani people, all right, particularly the non-indigenous, they are truly, truly very, very wild and I can say very wicked in the sense that, but, but you can also understand where we are, they are coming from. Now, these are people who for years and years and years for decades have been moving around with cattle. They have no access to education. To a large extent, they don't even have access to religion. They are non-Nigerians. Uh, they are non-Nigerians. All right? They are non-Nigerians. You see, there is, people need to understand the difference between the indigenous Fulani communities and those who come, taking advantage of the ECOWAS uh, free, free movement thing, to move in and out of this but country. But that doesn't mean will. that the military, whose uh, primary role is to protect the territorial integrity of the country. That doesn't mean that they can't do something about this, does it? No, no, no. Nobody says so. Uh, you, you're talking about what is happening now. Yes, if, you, if you're no. talking about foreigners who are non-Nigerians coming in, attacking and moving back. Yes. Has the government called on the military to see how they could stop of this? Of course, as we speak, there is military presence, heavy military but presence. But the people always say that when they call on security to come in, they don't come in. But when they think that they were, there's going to be reprisals, then the security agencies come in and stop any suspected reprisal. No, quite, quite frankly, quite frankly, let me, let me be very honest with you once more. You know, the way these people are more or less, like I said, criminals, all right, that come in from only God knows where. The, and government, attack, the government doesn't know where No! No! attack and disappear, come from the thin air and disappear into the thin air. What we understand, for those of us that have been studying the reality way they operate, is that once you have a killing of a full animal, all right, what they do is to send words around to different places. Some could come from Bauchi, some could come from Plato, some could come from Niger, and they just meet there strike and disappear. So what we have done as a government is to create the presence of the military in positions, you know. But like I said, what we need first and foremost and more importantly is the cooperation of the communities. These communities in which these things happen, we have a well-structured leadership. We have the traditional leadership. We have a, re a religious leadership. More importantly, we have political leadership. Okay. But what we've seen in Southern Karuna, what we've seen in Southern Karuna... Uh, Excellency, just, just give us a moment. Yeah. Uh, we'll take a quick break, but um, we'll come back so you can continue from that particular train of thought. No. Do join us again.